Hello, this is Tim's tip number eight. I'm going to show you how to fix a uh, Nissan Leaf stuck window. I had to replace the window controller uh, once for about $100 and now it's happening again. So I'm going to show you how to fix uh, permanently put a just a, a regular switch in in place of the uh, sophisticated controller. Uh, I should say sophisticated and error prone um, uh, unsustainable controller that uh, Nissan put in and I hope you like this uh, this this actually should work permanently now uh, there's no complex circuits to detect where the window is uh, the encoder is removed from the circuit and it's a straight up and down uh, window so here you go first thing you got to do is pry this off uh, with a putty knife uh, you can pry up on this and the whole door switch assembly will come out now I will show you how to get a switch. I had already purchased an old uh, Nissan a replacement for this, so I had extra door switches, or window switches. Uh, so I'm going, to, I, what I, I'm going to show you how to remove that switch. You could use another um, uh, on-off on switch that you could buy from Newark Electronics or something like that, but I used the original Nissan switch. And I'm going to show you, um, you know, how I removed that and mounted it on the on the door for the driver's side switch. The driver's side window is actually uh, only needs three wires to operate, and a fourth one, the ground. And uh, what I will show you here is how I identified that. I did some investigation and uh, analyzed the schematics and created my own schematic in the coming video. So to test my theory, I peeled back the insulation and exposed and cut uh, the three wire uh, connector that uh, feeds the driver's side window. So you notice that that meter peaked out at 11 amps. It did not blow a fuse. However, I would not hold it in the up or down position uh, for very long. Then I mark the wires uh, with the up, down, uh, the voltage, and also the ground. And then I made my own schematic to figure out the logic of the uh, double pole, double throw switch, which is really a center off switch. I then took my old circuit board and removed one of the switches from the regular doors. Now at this point I needed to understand where the switch was going to be mounted, and I noticed there was a spot uh, in the center here that there was some bare plastic that I could uh, you know, access. It would be safe to put the switch there. I drilled it out, hogged it out with my Dremel tool, and then uh, proceeded to mount the switch there uh, with some 5-minute epoxy, some VHB tape for strain relief, and that's the finished uh, product of the uh, door switch assembly. With the wires ready to be installed in the system, now I took my door off to do this job, but you don't have to, uh, but if you do, remember these two bolts. Here's the finished assembly all hooked up and ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. It took me about four hours to do this job. and. Uh, it took uh, some engineering. I'm kind of an advanced uh, experimenter and tinkerer, so, uh, but you can do it if uh, with patience. I figured I saved, uh, I made about $25 an hour by doing this myself, uh, about a $100 part that I could, uh, you know, did basically for free because I had an old switch. And uh, you could certainly order a double pole, double throw, um, on, off, on switch, which is uh, readily available. Um, not sure how much they are. Maybe they'd be $10 to $20, but uh, since I already had a Nissan Leaf switch, I figured I'd use that. And I uh, wish you luck in your pursuit of uh, the electric Leaf and zero emissions. Thank you.